Uh, we, this is Avengers 326. This is the star of the short-lived Barry Hamner run with art by Ryan Paul. And I chose to look at this because I'm also D and Simon Watterson's Fantastic Force. And these two runs, they're always quite hand-in-hand hand to me. Uh, in fact, there is a nice little nod in the next issue to it. But both those runs were, for me at least, these were like the last runs that I felt were pushing the books forward while honouring the past. After this, the books, they kind of became engulfed in writer vanity or editorial mandates or agenda or whatever. That's not to say that runs or stories after these aren't good. But this and Simon Watterson's Fantastic Force, they were kind of like the last runs that I thought were like proper Avengers or proper Fantastic Force. I'm not sure I'm explaining it very well. It's, it's kind of hard to explain really what I mean. But the lineup for this run is great. It's unique and exciting, but it still feels classic and legitimate. Again, I'm worried I'm sounding a bit snobby or elitist here. Uh, the team lineup, though, it's four. It's Big Border. Then also it's Captain America. It's she hulks and Iron Man. That's not it, though, because there's a whole bunch of others who are part of this team, but they're not here, like the Vision or Kazar, or they join in the next few issues, like... Rage and Spider-Man and Sandman. Here though, the Avengers, they are fixing up Avengers House. And as I just said, one of the new members of the team it is Rage. This is him here. This run introduced the character. This right here is his first appearance. He is a great character. He is a super strong teenager living in a black ghetto. And there's gang wars and there's crack dens and shit like that. And he shows up at Avengers house and he wants to join the team. But we'll come back to him because right now we are being introduced to the villain for this issue. And one thing this run doesn't have is very good villains. Uh, this guy is probably the best one. He's called Lieutenant Surge. His story is that he is a Russian bloke who got irradiated in Chernobyl. And now he is stuck in this containment suit. This suit of armour that they seem to have built exclusively. With the idea that whoever ends up wearing it will probably become a villain. They have brought him to America land for medical treatment. And what took me by surprise with rereading this issue was how much more focus and interest they put into this Russian bloke. We get a lot of backstory, we get his origini, we've got a lot of plot with him. But now we get back to Rage. And Rage, he is a very divisive character for a lot of readers. I've seen people, I've seen a lot of people, saying that when Rage joined the team, that was when they stopped caring about the Avengers. The team's membership, it became less special and less prestigious. The reason that Rage is so much like Marmite is two things. His costume, which, well his mask, it is the colour of Marmite. But yeah, he is dressed like a weird S&M Mexican wrestler. And he has got a jacket with his name on the back surrounded by flames. And more importantly, it is his personality or his attitude. Rage, he is introduced and he is depicted here as being an angry militant black man with a chip on his shoulder. He shows up at Avengers house and he demands that they put him on the team because he is black. And they didn't have any black members at the minute. And they didn't have a tremendous history of having loads and loads of black members. Two things I will say about this. Uh, three things, actually. This, it's all written with awareness. They know that Rage's arguments, while he raises some valid points, 
He's obviously using them to antagonize Captain America and the Avengers and almost blackmail his way onto the team. Secondly, we learn that Rage is actually 14 years old eventually. And I think that really contextualizes what we are seeing here. He's not an angry, indignant black extremist. He's just a black kid who has had it rough, who has got big muscles. He's a bit angsty and a bit immature. And the last thing I want to say is that it's really interesting that Kurt Busey ate it to the 90s so much when he just flat out repeats and rehashes the idea with Rage with his own character in Avengers a decade later. And he does it much worse. He creates a character nobody likes and identifies him as, in his own script's words, the token. Uh, Rage, of course, he goes on to join the New Warriors, where he probably fits in more. But I do quite like him on the Avengers. I think him and Sandman, they add that fresh feeling to the team. It's something that you've not seen before, but it's something that you really want to see. Uh, he storms off, and the Avengers, they go to investigate Lieutenant Surge. Uh, he woke up when he was in hospital and he was trapped in that suit and now he had radiation powers and he melted through the floor. So now the Avengers, they have got to intercept him. There's a whole diplomatic thing going on with him being a Russian national and the Russian government not giving the Avengers or the Americans enough intel. So then we have got a great sequence with She-Hulks. Hashtag make She-Hulk summit again. She is in the sewers by herself looking for Lieutenant Surge. But it's okay because Iron Man and Thor and a doctor and the Russian government lady, they are not far behind. But Lieutenant Surge, he has gone a bit mad. He's having flashbacks and he thinks that he is still in Chernobyl. And he ends up fighting she hulks and Thor. And sadly, we didn't get to see more of the fight because we cut away to Iron Man, who is predictably being boring. He rushes off to join She-Hulks and Thor, and they have already been beaten. And then Lieutenant Surge, he takes off his suit and he's about to go boom, boom. It's not over yet, though, because Rage, he's on the mean streets of New York land, the concrete jungle. And they are drug dealers, and he doesn't like drug dealers. And this introduces us to another of our villains for this run. This guy, he is called LD50. He's a well-spoken dandy who is also a drug dealer. He's obviously set up to be a foil for rage, and that, it's a purpose at least, but it doesn't make him any better. The villains, they really let this run down. And what happens is, well, Lieutenant Surge, MD in that explosion underground, it has caused the building to fall doom. To be continued, how will these seemingly two very unrelated things come together, even though you have just seen exactly how they come together? We've got an advert here for Kazar's comic. I really do like or respect or want to like this run, and this is a good issue when it comes down to it. We are introduced to a new character, uh, two new characters really, Lieutenant Surge. He goes on to have some more appearances. Uh, he's the only villain from this run who that is true of. Never, never quite gets much development, but he does appear after this. I like Rage, and I think he was a good and well-developed character. Uh, with this one, for a first issue in a run... It really does feel like we didn't get to see that much of the Avengers. Captain America, he had his moment debating with Rage and that was really it for him. Uh, she Oaks, Thor and Iron Man. Uh, they did do stuff but like Big Barter, she didn't really do out. And with the focus being away from the team so much, it's probably reflected quite well by the fact that Division and Kazar and Scarlett Johansson, they weren't in it, they weren't even mentioned. 
But I do think this is good. I recommend this one. I rated it seven thumbs up. 